Hi, my name's Tom with some more ATPL tips. This is video number two in a series that I'm calling GNAV Basics. The first video was hopefully a refresher for you uh, in latitude and longitude, and I looked at the DMS button on your calculator for degrees, minutes, and seconds. Uh, this video uh, will be departure and the departure formula. The next video will cover rum lines and great circles, and video four will look at convergency and conversion angle. Now, to be honest with you, departure is not the most complicated thing in the world. So what I'm going to try and do in this video is break all of its component parts down and explain why they exist within the departure formula so that instead of it being another formula that you've just got to memorize, actually, you just know it and it will make sense. Hopefully, that's the plan. So let's go. Okay, departure. In its most basic form, departure is just measuring the east to west distance between two points along the same line of latitude. In other words, if all we're doing is measuring the east to west or west to east difference, then really all we need to do is measure the change in our longitude between those positions and then convert it from degrees into nautical miles. Let's take a look at this top down view of the Earth. We've got the zero degree meridian, the Greenwich meridian at the bottom of the screen, and we've got the 180 degree meridian or the anti meridian at the top of the screen. Now we know that there are 360 degrees in a circle, and we know that we divide the Earth up into 360 lines of longitude. And the portion of the Earth that's got the widest circumference on the Earth's axis is the equator. Well, here is a key fact for you to learn really, really early on, and that is that at the equator, every degree represents 60 nautical miles. Now, we can use that piece of information to work something out about the Earth. If we've got 360 degrees and each of those degrees is worth 60 nautical miles at the equator, then with a little bit of calculator trickery, we can type in 360 degrees times 60 nautical miles, and you should come out with 21,600 nautical miles. So the circumference of the Earth is 21,600 nautical miles. And so the first part of the departure formula uh, is departure equals our change in longitude times 60 nautical miles per degree. All we're doing is taking the number of degrees that are two positions are offset from each other and we're converting it into uh, nautical miles by multiplying it by 60. So let's do some questions. Okay, so here's a question that says, what is the departure between position A, zero degrees north, south, zero degrees east, west, and position B, uh, zero degrees north, south, and zero four zero degrees east? Okay, so the first thing that I do here is always draw a diagram. And I always tend to put either the zero degree, uh, the Greenwich meridian, or the uh, 180 degree anti meridian. This question is very specifically talking about zero degrees east or west, so we'll draw the Greenwich meridian. Point A is on the Greenwich meridian, so you can label that if you want as zero, zero, zero degrees uh, east, west, and it's um, zero, zero degrees north, south. That's position A. Position B is to the east of um, position A. So if this is uh, the zero, zero, zero degree, then east is to the right, west is to the left. So position B is over here somewhere, and it is zero, zero degrees north, south, zero, four, zero degrees east. So what are we doing? We're trying to find the change in longitude. Well, from the departure formula, we know that the change in longitude is the difference between this position and this position, well, it's 40 degrees. 40 degrees is the change in longitude here. We multiply it by 60 nautical miles per degree. Uh, do that on the calculator, 40 times 60, and you should get 2,400 nautical miles. Okay, so that's a really fairly easy first question. Uh, we'll do a couple more. Um, the thing that is maybe a little bit complicated at times is working out how to ascertain what the change in 
longitude actually is, which is why I would always say to draw a diagram. Um, if you've watched any previous videos of mine, you know that I'm a bit of a visual learner anyway, so I'll draw a diagram for just about anything. Um, so let's move on to another question. This one says, what is the departure between position A, zero degrees north south, zero two zero degrees west, and position B, zero degrees north south, zero four five degrees east? So again, let's draw a diagram. Uh, we're gonna use the Greenwich Meridian again. So zero, zero, zero is there. Uh, position A is zero, two, zero degrees to the west. Well, west is over here, east is over here. So position A, we can say that that is zero, two, zero degrees west um, for position A. Position B is to the east. So we'll put that over here, zero, four, five degrees. Now here, uh, we're looking for the change in longitude. Well, from the Greenwich Meridian to position A, it's 20 degrees. From the Greenwich Meridian to position B, it's 45 degrees. Obviously, we're gonna add those two together, so our change in longitude is going to be 65 degrees, and we multiply 65 degrees by 60 nautical miles, and that gives us an answer. So 65 times 60, do that on the calculator, 3,900 nautical miles. Again, that one's not especially complicated. It could be easy to get that one wrong if you are not quite familiar with where east and west are relative to the Greenwich Meridian. If you drew um, both in the same, both to the same side, if you missed that one was west and one was east, you could probably get that question wrong. Um, for example, if position A you'd drawn over in the east, um, and you put it over here somewhere, then you might have thought that the change in longitude was actually only 25 degrees. So do make sure you, what is it, measure twice, cut once. Do make sure you read the question twice, answer it once. Um, okay, anyway, let's move on to uh, the next question. Okay, this one is slightly more complicated again. Uh, this one says, what is the departure between point A zero degrees north south, 167 degrees east, and point B, zero degrees north south, 154 degrees west. Now, I said that this one is slightly more complicated, and it kind of is. You've probably noticed already that we're uh, dealing with um, lines of longitude which are basically around the other side of the Earth. We've got 167 east and 154 west. So this time on the diagram, I'm not gonna draw the Greenwich Meridian, I'm gonna draw the 180 anti-meridian. Now this is where things can uh, mess with your head a little bit. If you imagine you're looking at the Greenwich Meridian with east on the right, west on the left, suddenly if you turn that image around, to look at the anti-meridian. Well, actually this time west is on the right and east is on the left because it's all shifted as you uh, change the globe round. I, I don't think I've explained that very well, but, but get yourself an orange out of the fruit bowl, draw the uh, Greenwich Meridian and draw uh, the anti-meridian on it. Looking at the Greenwich Meridian, label the right-hand side of it east and the left-hand side of it west, then turn the orange round and you'll see what I'm talking about. Then put it back in the fruit bowl and see if anyone notices. They probably will. All right, let's move on to actually look at this question. So now we've got west over here, east over here, and what are the coordinates? So zero degrees north-south, 167 east. So 167 east is over there and position B, uh, 154 degrees to the west. We need to measure the change in longitude between these positions. Well, the difference from 167 to 180 is 13 degrees, and the difference from 154 to 180 should be 26 degrees. Check it on a calculator if you're not certain. Um, and absolutely, exam advice, always do everything on a calculator, even if it's something really, really fundamental that, you know, they teach in primary school, do it on a calculator anyway. Um, 
you know what the answer is going to be. The calculator will prove it to you. The last thing that you want is to have got a question wrong because you made a really, really stupid mistake. Um, so yeah, calculator. So let's do that. So 180 degrees minus 167 degrees gives us 13 degrees and 180 degrees minus 154 degrees gives us 26. Okay, so add them together and I'll do it on a calculator for the sake of continuity. Uh, it gives us 39 degrees. So our change in longitude is 39 degrees. Uh, multiply that by 60 nautical miles per degree. And you should get 2,340 nautical miles. Cool. Well, the portion of the formula that we've looked at so far works just fine at the equator. However, there's a strong possibility that you're not just going to be spending your aviation career at the equator, uh, nor are your exams just going to focus on the equator. So we need to incorporate something into the formula that takes account of a changing latitude. So we'll use the cosine of the latitude and we'll add that into the formula and I'll show you why. Since in the aviation community we tend to believe that the world isn't flat, we have to take into account the fact that as our latitude increases, i.e. as we get further away from the equator, either to the north or the south, the radius of our latitude from the Earth's axis decreases as shown by these decreasing concentric circles. This means that the distance between two points on the same lines of longitude will decrease until at the pole there's no distance between them at all. Hopefully you can see the decreasing distance between these sets of points on corresponding lines of longitude just at different latitudes. I know this might logically make sense and you can probably picture it on a globe already but I'm going to show you using trigonometry why we use the cosine function and not the sine function in the departure formula. Here's a slice through the centre of the Earth. We've got the equator horizontally and we've got the Earth's axis vertically. We can also represent some lines of latitude using uh, dashed pink lines. A position's latitude refers to the pitch of a line connecting the centre of the Earth to the surface of the Earth relative to the equator. We can use the equator and a position's latitude to draw a right angle triangle onto this cross section of the Earth. This first position is 30 degrees north of the equator, the second position is 45 degrees north of the equator, and the third position is 60 degrees north of the equator. Now see the three right angle triangles here. The position's latitude refers to the angle between the position on the Earth's surface and the equator. As a quick sidebar, what I've just said is mostly true. In reality, the Earth is slightly squashed at the poles. It isn't a perfect sphere. Um, and that's the difference between what's known as a geocentric model like this and a geodetic or geographic model, which takes the, uh, the squashed nature of the planet into account. In your exams, uh, the maths will be based on this geocentric model, uh, but your charts and navigation devices, whatever, they'll be based upon the, the geodetic geographic modeling. Um, go and look that one up in your textbooks. I'm not going into that in this video. Just be aware that that's the case. Anyway, so why do we care about these triangles? Well, if we take two of them away and just focus on one of them, I'll show you. We know that the widest part of the Earth is at the equator. So we can say that the largest radius relative to the Earth's axis is at the equator and at any latitude north or south of the equator, the radius will be smaller. So as our latitude increases, either to the north or to the south of the equator, we need to be able to multiply our departure by a factor that decreases as our latitude increases. Now from trig, we know about sine, cosine, and tangent. The function that we're interested in here is cosine, and you may have already worked it out, but let me show you. In our case, the hypotenuse is the radius of the Earth. That is to say, it's the distance from the center of the Earth to the point on the surface we're interested in. The adjacent side uh, and the opposite sides are labeled on the triangle. 
Notice how if I draw a line of latitude back onto this sketch, the distance from the Earth's axis to the point where it touches the Earth's surface is the same length as the adjacent side of the triangle. So we've got an angle, we've got the length of the hypotenuse, and we've got the length of the adjacent side. So the trigonometric function that we're interested in is cosine. Now, if you try cos uh, 30, if you try the cosine of 30 on your calculator, you should come out with something like 0.867. In other words, it's a number smaller than one. Try the cosine function of our other two latitudes and for cos 45, you'll get 0.71 and for cos 60, you should get 0.5. Do it for the equator and for 90 degrees as well. And if you do cos zero, you should get one. And if you do cos 90, you should get zero. So you can see that the cosine function decreases in size as the angle of latitude increases. And that is why we use cosine. So now you can work out the departure between any two points on the Earth. So as a quick recap, here is the departure formula. The departure formula is the change in longitude, which will be in degrees, multiply that by 60 nautical miles per degree to convert it into nautical miles, and then multiply that by the cosine of your latitude. So let's have a look at this exam question. It says the rum line distance between position A, 60 degrees north, 2 degrees 30 minutes east, and B, 60 degrees north, 7 degrees 30 minutes west is, and there are some options to choose from, and you've got the question numbers for AVEXAM and ATPL questions if you want to go and look at this particular question on one of the question banks. First thing that we always do, or that I would always do, is draw a diagram. We're very close to the Greenwich Meridian, so I'll use that as my reference line, 0, 0, 0 degrees. Position A, well, first of all, we've got east over here, west over here, just to remind myself. Position A is 2 degrees and 30 minutes to the east. So that is, of course, measuring the distance off the Greenwich Meridian. And position B is 7 degrees and 30 minutes to the west. 7 degrees, 30 minutes to the west, describing this distance here. For our departure formula, we want the com we want the combined change. We want the total change in longitude. So let's add those two together. So seven degrees thirty minutes plus two degrees thirty minutes, and that will give you a total of ten degrees change in longitude. So we can say that uh, our change in longitude is ten degrees. Now we're going to multiply that by sixty. You can do that. Um, in your head, or you can use the calculator. And actually, I would always advise using the calculator. If you get into the habit of trying to do things in your head, it's gonna make questions um, not trickier, but you stand a stronger chance of making a stupid mistake and you wanna try and iron out any, any um, user error mistakes if you can. So, 10 degrees times 60 nautical miles will give you 600. Of course, it's given it in degrees. We press the DMS button and that takes us to 600 nautical miles. So now we just multiply that times the cosine of our latitude, which is, um, what's our latitude? It's 60 degrees. So 600 times cos 60 gives us 300. Notice how if you if you start entering um, something into your calculator using the DMS button, it will always come out in a DMS format. So um, because I started by typing in the formula or the format of our coordinates as um, 10 degrees or 7 degrees 30 minutes, 2 degrees 30 minutes, it keeps giving it to me as a DMS um, formatted number. But just press the DMS button again and it takes it out of that. So DMS 300 degrees, I press the DMS button and it changes it to 300 nautical miles for me. So that is our answer, 300 nautical miles. And so I would go with the option D, 300 nautical miles. Good. Right, next question. Hopefully that wasn't too tricky. It's exactly the same as the previous examples that we looked at. We're just now incorporating the cosine of our latitude. So next question. Uh, what is the rum line distance in nautical miles between two positions on latitude 60 degrees north that are separated by 10 degrees of longitude? Okay, this is really, really similar to our previous question. 
Um, if you remember on the last one, we had a change in longitude of uh, 10 degrees because 7 degrees 30 minutes, 2 degrees 30 minutes, add them together, you get a total of 10 degrees. So we know that our change in longitude is 10 degrees. We know that our uh, factor to multiply that by is 60 nautical miles per degree. So 10 times 60 is 600 nautical miles that that would cover at the equator, but we're not at the equator. So multiply that by the cosine of 60 degrees. And just like in the last question, we end up with 600 times cos 60. And if you remember much about trigonometry, you know that cos 60 is 0 0.5. So 600 divided by two is the same thing. But 600 times cos 60 gives us 300 nautical miles. So again, for this question, the answer is 300 nautical miles. So I would go with option A. Yeah, I'd go with answer A, 300 nautical miles. Okay, cool, let's have a look at another one. The departure between position A, 60 degrees north, 160 degrees east, and B, 60 degrees north, X, is 900 nautical miles. What is the longitude of X when flying eastbound? Okay, this is stepping up slightly. Uh, let's write out the formula just to remind ourselves. So departure equals the change in longitude times 60 times the cosine of our latitude. They've given us some bits of information. They've given us, or they haven't given us certain bits of information that they had previously done so. So let's just fill in what we know. Well, the question's telling us that the the, the departure that we've got is 900 nautical miles. So we can put that in place of our departure. The change in longitude is what we're trying to work out so that we can then work out what our final position is. So the change in long times 60 doesn't change, it's constant, times the cosine of our latitude, which in this case is again 60 degrees north. So uh, we can rewrite that to say 900 equals the change in longitude times 60 times the cosine of 60, or 60 times cos 60 should give us 30, which it does. So 900 divided by 30 equals the change in longitude. 900 divided by 30 on your calculator should give you 30. A change in longitude is 30 degrees. But we're not done there because it's asking us what our actual uh, line of longitude would be. So we know that we've got 30 degrees to travel eastbound. Now let's draw that onto a diagram and our starting point is actually 160 degrees east. So we're around the 180 degree meridian side of the globe. So let's use that as our reference line. Uh, remember that east is on the left and west is on the right in this um, in this case uh, and 160 degrees east is there. Now if we continue traveling east from 160 degrees east uh, we've only got 20 degrees to go until we hit the anti-meridian and we start coming back into the western hemisphere but we're traveling a total of 30 degrees. So we're gonna go this 20 and we're gonna go an extra 10 degrees into the Western Hemisphere to get our final uh, position B. So hopefully you can see that all we need to do is 180 degrees, which is the most you can get in either direction before you start coming back on yourself. 180 degrees minus 10 degrees will give us a longitude of 170 degrees west. Let's see what happens. Yeah, 170 degrees west. Answer A. I hope you found that one okay. Don't get confused, um, or it would be really easy to get confused about what happens when you get to the other side of the globe and which is the eastern half, which is the western half. Um, that's probably the most complicated thing in that particular question. Okay. Let's have a look at this question, and this is probably about as complicated as it gets in the world of departure. Um, long question, I'll read it out. An aircraft flies the following run line tracks and distances from position four degrees north, 30 degrees west. So the aircraft flies 600 nautical miles south, then 600 nautical miles east, then 600 nautical miles north, then 600 nautical miles west. 
what is the final position of the aircraft. Now at first glance, you go, oh, it's just a square, 600, 600, 600, 600, you'd end up back where you started. But that is not the case, and I'll show you why. Remember how earlier we looked at the fact that the radius from the Earth's axis for the center of our lines of latitude, our circles of latitude, decreases as we get closer to the pole. What that means is that the circumference of the circle, i.e. the total length of a line of latitude, will be decreasing as we get closer to the pole as well. So let's, uh, let me show you what I mean um, and how it will relate to that question that we've just been looking at by doing a couple of quick examples. So let's say on a given day we're flying 1200 nautical miles. So two questions, how many degrees of longitude would that cover at 30 degrees north? And how many degrees of longitude would that cover at 60 degrees north? Well, it's not that tricky to work out. We know what our departure formula is, we can just rearrange it. Our formula would say 1200, i.e. the departure, 1200 equals the change in longitude, which is what we're trying to work out, multiplied by 60, multiplied by, in the first example, the cosine of 30 degrees. By rearranging the formula, we get the change in longitude is equal to 1200 nautical miles divided by 60 times the cosine of 30. And if you do that as an operation in your calculator, you'll come out with just over 23 degrees. Now, if you do the same thing for the 60 degree line of latitude, and you can rearrange the formula to say 1200 divided by 60 cos 60, you'll get 40 degrees um, of longitude. So you can see that proportionally, the further away from the equator you are, or the closer to the pole you are, um, the, the greater proportion of that circle you're actually traveling. So if we put the 23 and the 40 degrees onto this map, you can see that at the uh, 30 degree line of latitude, the wedge made by 1200 degrees looks, uh, by 1200 nautical miles looks something like this. If we do the same thing for 60 degrees north, you can see that the wedge is actually wider. Proportionally, we're traveling a greater distance around that circle, even though it's still 1200 nautical miles. So let's take that back to the question that we were just looking at and show you what type of thing would be going on. Now, these are just example points. These aren't the actual points as labeled in that question, but it makes the point. We already know that at different latitudes, the distance changes between lines of longitude. However, this question is telling us that we're traveling 600 nautical miles to the east and to the west, but that's happening at different latitudes. Let's take this arbitrary position in southwest France, and let's say we travel a certain distance to the east, then we travel the same distance to the north, then the same distance to the west, and the same distance then to the south. Notice how our final position is not where we started, it's to the west by a certain amount. Now this is just um, arbitrary to show you uh, that the square is not a square, um, but it gets the point across, I hope. So lines of latitude are all different sized circles that get smaller as you get towards the poles. But lines of longitude, meridians of longitude, together with their anti-meridian, they form a circle, and all meridian-anti-meridian -meridian pairings, they all form a circle that is the same size. So for this question, if we travel north up one uh, line of longitude, travel east or west a particular distance, then we travel south by the same distance that we traveled north, we're going to end up in the same position. Our latitude will stay the same. Okay, let's take a look at answering this exam question. And the first thing that I'll always do is draw a diagram to remind myself what it is I'm actually trying to do. So we're starting there, we're traveling 600 nautical miles south, then we're traveling 600 nautical miles east, then 600 nautical miles north, and finally 600 to the west. Uh, this might help you. I always need to draw a little picture to remind myself what's going on. Now, we already know that lines of latitude vary in size as our latitude increases away from the equator. We know that lines of latitude get smaller as our latitude increases. But lines of longitude are all the same length. They will start at the South Pole, they will end at the North Pole, and each meridian, together with its anti-meridian, forms a complete circle around the Earth. 
And in this geocentric model that we use, which is this model that assumes that the world is a perfect sphere, well, we know that at the equator, one degree is equivalent to 60 nautical miles. Well, each line of longitude will also be the same diameter and therefore have the same circumference as the equator because it's a perfect sphere. So in terms of our change north-south, we can say that uh, 600 nautical mile change to the south, uh, we can divide that by 60 nautical miles per degree to work out the number of degrees that we're changing. And the reason that we want to know how many degrees our latitude is changing to the south and to the north is so that we can plug the new latitude into our departure formula. So, if we're starting off by traveling 600 nautical miles south, well, 600 nautical miles divided by 60 nautical miles per degree gives us 10 degrees. So that's what our change in latitude is as we travel south. And by the way, because uh, lines of latitude, because lines of longitude rather are all the same length, we're having a 10 degree change to the south. We're also gonna have a 10 degree change to the north when we get to that point later on, which means that our final latitude will be the same as our starting latitude. So we can already rule out option D from the answers that are listed. Okay. If we've started at a latitude of four degrees to the north and we've traveled south by a distance of 10 degrees, then let's draw a little picture. Four degrees north is up here. If this is the equator, that tells us that this distance here is four degrees. We've still got, uh, we've still got, <coughs> we've still got six degrees to travel, which means that we're now in the southern hemisphere. Uh, six degrees south. So our new latitude to use in our first departure formula is six degrees south. Now it doesn't matter whether you're south or north, you just use a cosine of six. So the first leg um, of our journey takes us 10 degrees to the south. The second leg of our journey is going to be using a departure formula. This is for leg two. Uh, the departure formula will say 600 nautical miles, because that is our departure, equals the change in longitude, which is what we're trying to find out, multiplied by 60, multiplied by the cosine of 6 degrees, because we've just established that our new latitude is 6 degrees south. So, rearranging that formula, we can say that the change in longitude equals 600 divided by 60 times the cosine of 6. Plug that into a calculator, 600 divided by 60 cos 6, and you get 10.0550828. What on earth is that telling you? Well, that's telling you that you're traveling that many degrees, but that isn't in a conventional standard format that you and I are used to looking at. So press the DMS button on your calculator, and it'll change it into a degrees, minutes, and seconds format. Now, I would advise you to not do any rounding at this stage. When you look at the answers that are available to you, there aren't any answers that list seconds. However, if you start rounding now, you might make an assumption that leads you to choose one of the wrong answers later on. So I'd always stick to be as accurate as possible. And if anyone's gonna be inaccurate along the way, let it be the exam questions in their answers. It's better if you can get the right answer and then choose which one, which of the available answers is closest. Yeah, okay, so converted, that gives us 10 degrees, three minutes, 18.3 seconds. That's how far from our initial position or the end of our first leg, that's how far we've traveled to the east. So um, you could actually work out what the lat long of this particular position is if you want. So to say that this position here, so we had A as our starting point, position B, position C, and position D. Let's do that. So we know what position A was. Position B, we've traveled 10 degrees to the south. So position B was six degrees, zero minutes south, and um, the same latitude, which was, or the same longitude, sorry, which was zero three zero degrees, zero minutes west. Position C, now, we've got a change in Longitude. We're still at the same latitude, so it's six degrees zero minutes south. Now, 
Do you add 10 degrees or do you subtract 10 degrees from the 30 that our initial position was? Well, we're traveling to the east. And if, um, let's draw another little diagram. Zero degree meridian there. West is on the left, east is on the right. We start off at this position here, 0, 3, 0. And we're traveling east, right? It tells us in the question, we're traveling 600 nautical miles to the east, which means we're going this direction, which means we're getting closer to the Greenwich Meridian. Now, how many degrees west is the Greenwich Meridian? It's zero degrees west, which means that we've got to decrease the number of degrees west as we travel east. We, let me say it this way. We're getting less west by traveling east. That makes a lot of sense to me in my head, but I'm not sure whether that just comes across as a little bit mad. But our position is less west than it was. So we can take 0, 030 0 degrees, subtract 10 degrees, 3 minutes, 18.3 seconds. And you can do that on your calculator by going 0, 030 0 degrees minus answer. Uh, and we should come out with a DMS answer of 19 degrees, 56 minutes, 41.7 seconds. So our new position, position C, is 6 degrees south, 19 degrees, or 019 degrees, 56 minutes, 41.7 seconds to the west. Okay, so far so good. Okay, so actually this uh, this change here to get from position C to position D is actually really straightforward because we know that it's just a 10 degrees change in latitude as we go uh, 600 miles north. So actually position D, we go back to our original latitude, which was 4 degrees and 0 minutes north, and our new longitude, which is 019 degrees, 56 minutes, 41.7 seconds uh, west. Now, there's one last calculation to do here, and that is for this final leg as we travel to the west, back towards our initial starting point. And I'm going to say that that is position E that we're aiming for. Um, now, you can probably, if you use a, just a little bit of thought, you can actually choose the right answer already, because we know that the further away from the equator you are, the further your change in longitude will be for a given departure. So initially we were at six degrees south, i.e. six degrees away from the equator. Now we're only four degrees south, so we're only four degrees away from the equator. It's a really small difference, only two degrees, but what it means is that we will travel further around the six degree line of latitude than we will around the four degree line of latitude. What that means is that we're not gonna make it back to our initial starting point. And if we're not going to make it back to our starting point, then there's only one answer on the screen that will work, and that is answer A. We're not going to make it back to 30 degrees west, so we're probably going to stop at 29 degrees and 58 minutes to the west. I'll show you why. If you can work out things like that, if you can understand the way the square not being a square uh, format works, you're, uh, you're standing a good chance of getting these questions right really quickly. Um, okay, so let's do the maths for that last leg. So we're now, I'm going to get a new page. Uh, okay, we're now going um, from D to E. So we're now going from 4 degrees north, 019 degrees, 56 minutes, 41.7 seconds west. And we're traveling 600 minutes to the west. So our, depo our departure formula will be 600 nautical miles equals the change in longitude, which we don't yet know, times 60 times the cosine of our latitude, which is in this case, four degrees north. So rearrange that formula, change in longitude equals 600 divided by 60 cos four, that's a degree symbol. Uh, and so plug that into the calculator 600 divided by 60 cos 4, and you get 10.02. Again, that's not a very um, familiar format for a, for a degree minute second uh, set of coordinates, so press the DMS button, and you will get 
degrees, 1 minute, 27.91 seconds. Okay, you can see that that number is less than the change in longitude we had at our 6 degrees south line of latitude. So, um, we need to now work out what our final position is. Well, we know what the, the position what the coordinates of position D are, 4 degrees north, 19.56 and 41.7 seconds west. Um, so we're going now further west because we're traveling westbound. So we can take this new set of coordinates, um, this, this uh, new change in longitude and add it to the latitude, the longitude, sorry, of position D. So 0, 1, 9 degrees, 56 minutes, 41.7 seconds, plus 10 degrees, 1 minute 27.91 seconds and what we'll get put that in your calculator 19 degrees 56 minutes 41.7 seconds plus answer turn it into a DMS you get 29 degrees 58 minutes 9.61 seconds okay so the only option really that therefore is available to us on the board is option A and you'll, you'll find that exam questions look like this where uh, you've got a very specific answer and you might find that the answers that are available to you are a little less specific, a little more vague. Um, there's, there's a couple of these questions in the banks. It may come up in your exam. Uh, I didn't see one when I did mine, but that doesn't mean to say that you won't. This particular question came off of AVEXAM. It's number 2338. There's a similar question but with different numbers on ATPL questions, uh, which is why it's a sort of, um, on ATPL questions, it's 612749. So go and try those questions and it's a good opportunity for you to apply your understanding of uh, the, the way that, that latitude affects the distance that you're traveling. Yeah, so there we are. So as a quick reminder then, departure is just the east to west or west to east distance along a given line of latitude between two points. It's measured in nautical miles, obviously, and to convert from degrees to nautical miles, uh, the formula exists, also taking into account the latitude for the position that you're at. But what about questions that give you different latitudes? Well, you'll know when you study the um, convergency and conversion angle process and the formula that goes with that, you'll know that you use the mean latitude, that is the average latitude between the two positions. And if you're given similar but not the same latitudes for departure, you can basically do the same thing. You can add the two positions together, divide it by two, and that will give you the average latitude for the position that you're trying to work out the departure um, between. And that will, it, it's not perfect, but it'll get you through departure questions. I'm not sure I've seen many, many departure questions that actually use different latitudes, but because departure and conversion angle and convergency, because the formulas are so similar, if you remember that one uses the mean latitude, it's easy to remember that the other one can use the mean latitude as well. And that's kind of it. That is departure. Like I said, it really isn't that complicated, but, um, Hopefully, now that I've kind of gone into maybe too much detail about why cosine gets used and that kind of thing, maybe it makes a little bit more sense. Um, I really want to get to a point with this. Because GNAV gets more complicated in other areas, if you can get to a point where you just, you just understand why departure is the way it is, it means you won't even have to think about it when those questions come up in your exam. So, here's a few key points to remember. Firstly, we assume using a geocentric model that the Earth is a perfect sphere. It actually isn't, but for the sake of exam questions, it is. Um, secondly, at the equator, one degree is equivalent to 60 nautical miles. And thirdly, the departure formula is the change in longitude multiplied by 60 multiplied by the cosine of mean latitude, and I'm saying mean latitude here, chances are it'll be the same latitude, but the departure formula as I remember it is um, change in longitude times 60 times the cos of your mean lat. And that is it. So, I hope that's alright, I hope that's not too um, 
to phasing. GNAV gets a little bit more tricky than this. Uh, if you found this video helpful, then I'd love it if you'd give me a thumbs up. Um, subscribe to the channel if you're not already and spread the love. If, if you're finding this helpful, I would really appreciate it if you tell other ATPL students um, about it as well. Also, give me some ideas of what might be a useful topic to cover for you in the future and I'll uh, do my best to do it. Anyway, for now, my name's Tom and I'll see you next time with some more ATPL tips.